O'Donnell for KPVM TV News 46 and KA's Country Radio 95.9. This is our special report called Behind Closed Doors. Lamar Odom has taken a couple steps in his speaking, according to his family, since he was transferred to Los Angeles's Cedar Sinai Hospital last night from Sunrise Hospital in Las Vegas. His wife says so he can get the best possible treatment. Odom was found unconscious October 13th around 3 p.m. in bed at the Love Ranch brothel owned by Dennis Hoff in Crystal, Nevada. They are calling this miraculous progress for the former NBA player. The family, which includes his father, aunt, two children, the Kardashian family, which includes his estranged wife, Chloe, thanked Sunrise Hospital and asked supporters to keep him in their prayers. Lamar checked into the brothel on Saturday, October 10th, to stay for a few days, according to Dennis Hoff. The 911 calls reveal that Odom was using cocaine, alcohol, and what they call herbal Viagra during his visit. The hospital allegedly said that they found a cocktail of drugs in his system, including opiates. Odom was found barely breathing by two girls who he hired to party with him, with blood coming from his nose and white foam coming from his mouth. He was transferred to Desert View Hospital here in Frump, then by ambulance to Sunrise. The 6'10 player was unable to fit into the helicopter to be airlifted to Las Vegas because of his size and condition at the time. He was airlifted in a larger helicopter last night and a fixed-wing aircraft, according to Fire Chief Scott Lewis from Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, because he is now able to sit up and his current condition much improved. Lamar Odom and Khloe Kardashian were married in 2009 and filed for divorce four years later. They signed divorce papers in July of this year and are awaiting a judge's approval at this time. The couple had their own reality show, Khloe and Lamar. It lasted for two seasons and 20 episodes. We caught up with brothel owner Dennis Hoff about the incident in our exclusive interview. I'm here with Dennis Hoff. How are you doing today, Dennis? I'm doing great. I'm a little tired. Uh, I've been caught up in a media firestorm, and uh, but I'm doing good. So you've been uh, doing interviews all over the place. Uh, tell me kind of what's uh, kind of accumulated out of those. Have you been able to get the word out about what's been going on? Absolutely. You know, I, I got thrown into this because on the way to the hospital, I get calls from TMZ saying, what happened? And I go back with Harvey Levin and TMZ forever, and I'm not going to hide from the media. I've always been straightforward. I've been honest with them, and I never had anything to hide in my life. So uh, I, I, I told them what I saw. That's been an issue coming up lately is how did they find out? Uh, seems like everybody in the world has Harvey Levin's um, uh, phone number on speed dial nowadays. Uh, they, you know, they pay they pay for information, and so when you when a celebrity gets on an airplane, like when I arrive in New York City, TMZ is always waiting for me when I when I get off the plane, go into the luggage area. So they know, they know everything, and the only thing I can assume is is if somebody at the hospital uh, or something like that, and they there was decided to be a tipster that day. So what did they say to you when you first spoke to them? They want to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And is it true that Lamar Odom just got hauled out of there in an ambulance uh, for a potential overdose? Mm -hmm. And and you told him? Yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely. And I told him the, the whole story. On, on October 5th, uh, Lamar uh, contacted us, wanted to come out, and uh, asked Dennis if it's okay to, to come out. You know, we're not saying whether we I knew Lamar prior to that or that he had ever been there, but the owner of the Lakers, Jerry Buss, was a friend for 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at his funeral. His son Johnny and I have had birthday parties uh, every year for 16 years together at the Bunny Ranch. Mm -hmm huge parties and so it, it you put two and two together and you could see where the connection would be um lamar uh, i told him yes he's welcome to come out absolutely but no drugs because i i don't know whether it's in his drug time or his non-drug time because he's had ups and downs for 20 years so you were aware of that oh everybody is yeah any, anybody that's a lakers fan uh or or a Kardashian fan, everybody knows that. It's, it's just part of, of Lamar's life. And so they, he said, if you agree not to bring any drugs, we're, you're welcome to come out, stay in the VIP house attached to the Love Ranch brothel uh, in Dennis's house, and you're going to have a great time. So the, every day he would change. The fifth, he wanted to come out. Then he said, no, nope, I don't want to. Then the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and then finally on the tenth, Saturday, uh, he said, come get, come get me. So my manager, T.J. Moore, mm -hmm. 
went and picked him up herself. I didn't want to send a driver. And uh, they had a nice conversation in the car, very mellow, happy. Um, he talked about his mom passing away at a young age. He talked about his father and his father's drug issues. Uh, talked about his mentor that made him the man that he is in, in New York. Uh, talked about how uh, how the Kardashians are and uh, how vindictive Chloe is. Had nice conversations. The conversation that people don't know about that I'm going to share with you is that in the car they talked about Madison Montag. Mm -hmm. Now Madison Montag is the first transsexual pre-op transsexual to work at a brothel, working at the Love Ranch. He'd been contacting, uh, Madison had been talking to Lamar on social media, going back and forth on Instagram, private messaging, and the, the manager said, are you going out there to see Madison? He says, well, I, I want to see everybody. I want to meet everybody before I make a decision. So they got there, and they wanted to meet all the girls, and they took them into a private room, a private area, so the public didn't see them, and they would... He, met all the girls and made a decision. And he picked two girls, a writer, Cherry, and a, a girl named Monica Monroe, mm -hmm. both on the loveranch.net website. Um, they went to the room and started negotiating because, you know, in, in, in the prostitution world, uh, at, at the love, excuse me, in the prostitution world, at the, at the legal brothels that I own, it's all negotiable. I don't set a price on anybody because I think that's degrading uh, for an owner to say this girl's worth this, this girl's worth this. So the girls are true independent businesswomen and they can negotiate the price. There wasn't much negotiation because they said, well, what do you want to do, Lamar? How much fun do you want to have? He says, I want to give each one of you $37,500. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to be with me a minimum of four, maximum of five days. And anything goes. We're going to party. We're going to have some fun. And uh, you're going to be with me 24 hours a day in and out of the bedroom, whether that's a, a eating Kentucky Fried Chicken because they ate a lot of that mm -hmm. or, or just hanging out in the bar and, and having cocktails. So they booked the money. Uh, and people said, well, is that, is that a lot of money? Yeah, it's a lot of money. Uh, but it was his idea. Could he have made a better deal? Maybe. He didn't ask. That's what he, he told them what he wanted to spend. And celebrities have spent a lot more. And a lot less, especially at the Bunny Ranch, which is world famous for my HBO Cat House show. Uh, we've had celebrities stay there for long periods of times and spend millions of dollars. Now the party starts. Everything's great. He gets a great night's sleep. He summons my manager, who was off on Sunday, back to the ranch, came into the VIP house, uh, gave her a big hug, gave her a kiss, and said, I got the greatest night's sleep I've had in a long time. Uh, I had so much fun. I, I might want to stay longer. When's Dennis going to be here? And she says, well, he's coming down in a few days and because we're going to have a birthday party for him on Saturday. She says, well, I'm staying. Mm -hmm. So they called me and told me. I said, great, I'll stay in another suite or in the second bedroom of, of, of that suite. Sunday, uh, Sunday night afternoon, he gets a, a call from somebody, and, he, and he's a little irritated, a little somber, if you will, and the conversation was about the Kardashian show. And they did a rerun on him where he didn't, he didn't think he, he looked good. And he didn't look good, mm -hmm. from what everybody tells me. Um, a couple hours later, he's over it. He moves on. Now, at that point, he pulls out a non-disclosure agreement and asks anybody that's around him to sign it, which was a little bit like... Like locking the door after the horses got out. I mean, you, you would have thought he would have done that right up front before he spent a dime. But all the everybody agreed. They were nice and, and nothing to hide. They agreed. Um, Monday, great day. Uh, had a good time. He got another good night's sleep. Uh, then Monday night, he decided he wanted to be by himself. He's, I want to be by myself. I just want to have a quiet evening by myself. The girls checked on him uh, about 6 in the morning, and he, he was fine, snoring. Uh, a management person took some food in in case he woke up and about midday, mm -hmm. snoring and sleeping away. And then at 3 o'clock, the girls checked on him again, and now he's unconscious. Foam coming out of his mouth and his T-shirt and his, his warm-up, I mean, gym shorts. Uh, they called us, called management. The management rushes in there. 
uh, Richard Hunter and TJ, and they call 911. And they get on 911, and they're, they're going through, put him on the left side, what's happening now, they're trying to describe everything. And he, the, the 911 operator says, is there anything else we need to know? And my staff member said, ask the girls. He said, well, he said he was doing cocaine on Saturday. And what he meant by that was before that, because he, he had already told the girls that. He was partying in Las Vegas and really just wanted to get away and wind down. And, and what a better place to do that, to get away from these friends that are doing drugs with and come to the ranch, because for 23 years on all my ranches, everybody knows, zero tolerance. We just don't, don't want to mess with it. If we see it, we're going to deal with it. And we don't care if you're a celebrity. We don't care if you're a billionaire. You can't do drugs in my house. At approximately 3.15 p.m. on October 13, 2015, a call came into the Nye County Dispatch Center, first from Mitzi John, an employee of the Love Ranch, uh, and a second caller, Richard Hunter, media director for Dennis Hoff's Bunny Ranch, requested an ambulance for an unresponsive male experiencing a medical emergency at the Love Ranch. The Love Ranch is located in Crystal, Nevada, approximately 20 miles north of Pahrump in Nevada and in Nye County. During that call, the reporting parties informed the Nye County Sheriff's Office dispatch the male had been using cocaine. They confirmed his usage on Saturday but was unsure if it had continued to the weekend. They also informed dispatch that he'd used up to 10 tabs of sexual performance enhancer supplements over the last three-day period. He was unconscious, but breathing. He had blood coming from his nose and his mouth, along with a white substance. An ambulance from Prump Valley Fire and Rescue Service arrived at 3.34 p.m., and the patient identified as Lamar Odom was stabilized and transported to Desert View Hospital, arriving at 4.16 p.m. The Nye County Sheriff's Office detectives, Corey Fowles and Michael Eisenlawful, arrived at the Love Ranch at 3.29 p.m. and conducted an investigation on scene. The detectives spoke with the staff and the manager. After being treated by the physicians, arrangements were made to transport Mr. Odom by Mercy Air Helicopter. The Mercy Air Helicopter landed at Desert View Hospital approximately 4.37 p.m. However, Mr. Odom was unable to be transported in that fashion due to his stature. He was transported from the hospital at 5.32 p.m. by Pahrump Valley Fire and rescue by ambulance and was attended during that transport by Mercy Air Flight Nurse. He arrived at Sunrise Hospital in Las Vegas, Nevada at 6.24 p.m. and at approximately 9.50 p.m. detectives applied for a search warrant for Mr. Odom's blood. The search warrant was granted by Judge Lane, 5th Judicial District. Detectives immediately drove to Sunrise Hospital and arrived at 12.15 a.m. to serve the search warrant. The search warrant was served at 1.07 a.m. Blood was drawn from Mr. Odom. The blood had been, has been booked into the Nye County Sheriff's Office evidence and is awaiting submission uh, to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Laboratory for processing. At this point, the case is ongoing. We would like to extend our best wishes to Mr. Odom and his family, and we're hoping for a speedy recovery. So he wasn't doing drugs with the girls? No, not at all. And um, so the ambulance comes, the Knight County Sheriff's Department arrives. They, go, they ask if they can have permission to go into the, the VIP suite. Of course, we had nothing to hide. They went in there, there was no paraphernalia, uh, there, was, there was no drugs.
They took Lamar away in the ambulance and went to the hospital here in Pahrump. Uh, immediately, they told my staff member that followed him in his own car, it doesn't look like he's going to make it. And if he does make it, he's going to have some serious damages. Um, at that point, they, they summoned the helicopter, and they, he wouldn't fit. Uh, too tall, which I don't, I don't really understand. I, I, I need to talk, talk to Nye County and find out because it seems like even though he's 6'10", you bend his legs and he's he's four foot four, right? And uh, but they couldn't get him in the helicopter, so they rushed him via ambulance to Sunrise Hospital. All the air programs within the valley, including the uh, one that operates here in Prump specifically, is an Augusta 109 platform, and the interiors are configured in the same way as far as the uh, patient compartment. In this particular case, uh, originally we had requested a helicopter when Medic Five received the initial report. They were still en route. We learned that that particular, the closest helicopter was unavailable to us. Therefore, our paramedic team continued to respond and manage the call until they returned back to Desert View Hospital, where patient care was then transferred to the Desert View ER staff. That helicopter, we spoke of a little earlier, then became available and responded to Desert View, landing at the helipad that's designated there. And it was immediately a part of our equation as whether or not we would be able to successfully place this patient into this particular type of aircraft. And again, it's not from the restraints of that particular ship, but just the nature of the, the platforms in general. When it was determined that it would not be prudent, given the appropriate patient care requirements and the overall stature of this particular patient, it was found to be most prudent to transport by ground, however, utilizing the advanced care provided by the Mercy Air staff. And uh, at sunrise, they were doing what they're supposed to do. Now, I got a call on Sunday from a guy named George Rivas. And George Rivas on Sunday says, uh, I, I need to talk to Lamar. Uh, and I said, who are you? I, I, you're, I'm his manager. And he said, well, I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know Lamar is, is here. I don't know Lamar. And the guy says, well, don't, don't, don't be funny with us. He says, we know he's there. And we know this because the, of the security footage mm -hmm. at the place Lamar lives. Mm -hmm. And they got the license plate and they traced the car to you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, if you're Lamar's manager, you need to call him because I don't have his number. I don't, I don't have anything. So then Monday, he had called again, saying the same thing to me. And I said, look, here's the number of all my brothels. You call and see if he's there because I don't, I don't know anything about it. So now, on Tuesday, when all this happens, then he says he calls from the hospital. Mm -hmm. As George Rivas says, I'm at the hospital. I want Lamar's belongings. I want it right now. I said, well, I don't know who you are. So you need to have somebody from the management company call me. And I got the call. A few minutes later, somebody very official, very nice, um, seemed very businesslike. And so we agreed to let him take the stuff. He comes out to the ranch, gets there about 6 o'clock. Our, our, our security footage shows that. It shows him looking through Lamar's stuff getting his driver's license, signing the documentation, saying he's receiving the goods. Mm -hmm. Another few hours go by, and this word got real strange. A guy named Jason calls and says, I'm Lamar's bodyguard. I've met you before a few times. I didn't remember him. Uh, the family's asked me to call you. They want to thank you for the fast response. And uh, where is his stuff? I said, well, his manager picked it up. I said, well, who's his manager? He said, well, I said, George Rivas. He said, well, I'm at the hospital, and George is in the lobby wanting to get a hold of us. So I go down and talk to him, and I say, who are you? I'm, the ma I'm, I'm George Rivas. Didn't say he was the manager. And uh, I've got his stuff. And the bodyguard's calling me to say, who is this guy? And I'm like, well, you don't know who he is? He says he's the manager. So some, something's not right with that story because the, the family did not. And I don't know when, when they say family, I don't know if it was the Odom family or the, or the Kardashian family, but one of them, they didn't know him. So that was, that was the end of that. So you don't know where his belongings are now? I know where his, his, his belongings were at my place. George Rivas signed them. Mm -hmm. There's there's photos of him that are out on the internet that I put out because I'm I want people to come forward and tell me who he is. I assume the stuff went to the Kardashian or the 
Odom family mm -hmm. through Jason, the bodyguard. Mm -hmm. But I but I've not, have not talked to Jason since then. He told me they would call and give me an update uh, with Lamar's condition, uh, but we never got that update, and it, which is totally understandable. I mean, they're they're in a uh, they're got a lot going on. And they would probably be contacting you at this point to let you know that they still haven't got the belongings, right? Absolutely. So I assume that they got the belongings and uh, got everything back. You know, there, there was stories out there about he had a lot of money in it and where was the money. Well, we the girls never saw any money. He paid with a credit card. Yeah. So they had no reason to see any money uh, at all. Um, can you tell me uh, any contact that you've had with the Nye County Sheriff's Office now since this incident? I've had none. Uh, they they came there and they uh, they did what they're supposed to do. Uh, the, my people said they were very thorough. They looked through everything. Uh, they took a bottle of cognac because Lamar had been drinking that, but not excessively because he he got a bottle on Saturday when he got there at six o'clock, and there was still what they estimated as being a third of a bottle left. Uh, they took uh, some uh, herbal supplements called Reload, uh, which is a sexual enhancement supplement. And that's common, and you provided those? Well, they, we sell it. Mm -hmm. We sell shot glasses and lighters and, mm -hmm. and, and, and branded merchandise from the Love Ranch and the Bunny Ranch, and that happened to be in the case also, along with condoms and lubricants and, mm -hmm. and all the things that you want in, in a, a, a what we call a party. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we we had that there, but it's, it's stuff you can buy anywhere in Pahrump. You know, any any service station, any any uh, truck stop, uh, everybody sells it. It's very very common. Now, last night on CNN, and I did Dr. Drew's show twice this last week. Mm -hmm. Dr. Drew said, the the announcer that asked him about it mm -hmm. said, stop with, with the with the herbal supplement. Mm -hmm. That's a smoke screen. It's a red herring. Yeah. He was doing coke or crack crack. In Vegas, he was drinking cognac. Who knows what other pills? He, and Dr. Drew said, I, "I'm guessing that, that it's coke or crack, along with cognac and, and some type of barbiturates." And today, when I talked to TMZ, they told me they had verified that that he had some type of barbiturates uh, in, in his system. The hospital is reporting opiates um, in the blood. Yeah. Opiates, okay. And uh, I, I don't really know the difference, to be honest with you. Uh, what I what I assume they're talking about is some type of a sleeping pill. Um, can you tell me, is it typical for uh, the girls to negotiate like that without anybody else in the room um, for that amount of money? Uh, and is that a common amount of money for that type of situation? It is very typical for the girls to negotiate. Mm -hmm. And um, as I've told the media, it's the working girl's job to get as much money as they can, because that's how they make their living. It's the customer's job to pay as little as he can, but still have a good time. And someplace in the middle, everybody's happy. Now, in this case, Lamar didn't want to negotiate. He just said $75,000, which is a large sum of money, and the girls just agreed to it. And, they, and they weren't about to say, no, Lamar, that's a little too much. We could do that for 50. That's, not, that's never going to happen in, in the prostitution industry at all. Uh, the, the, the girls were th thrilled to death. He was, they were very grateful. He was very generous. And um, he wanted to have some serious fun. And um, I think the girls were probably at their best when they're getting paid that kind of money. So did he specifically ask for those two girls, or did he want um, additional girls, or just stay with the two? He met all the girls, including the pre-op transsexual, Madison Montag, mm -hmm. and he chose those two. Now, after they booked this party, I started getting texts from this Madison Montag. Mm -hmm. Lamar was here to see me. I feel like they... they, they moved him to the other girls. They guided him in that direction. That he didn't pick me because there was people around when he really was there just to see me. We've been private messaging. We've been going back and forth on Instagram. I'm upset. I feel like I, I got blocked and I lost a lot of money. I don't know whether that's true or not. I think, it, I think it's true that they were messaging each other prior to him coming in. I know they were on face, uh, Instagram together. I don't know whether Lamar felt like he wanted to pick the transsexual but didn't do it because there was other people watching and around. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. I just don't know. Did he give you any kind of indication that he was more interested in Madison 
prior to it? No, because the manager who knew that they'd been communicating mm -hmm. asked him in the car, and he says, well, I want to meet everybody. Yeah. And she says, are you going to party with Madison Montag? He kind of hesitated and says, you know, I want to meet everybody before I make a, a final decision. Actually, Madison was the first ever mm -hmm. uh, transsexual to be hired. And so she still is right now? Um, no. Uh, and I only say no because on her Twitter two or three days ago, she said, I will no longer be working at Dennis Hoff's Love Ranch and mentioned that she was miserable every day she was there. Yeah. I see that as a bit of jealousy. Yeah. I'm just going to go out on a limb. She's, she was upset, Dennis said. She was upset. She was jealous that uh, Lamar did not pick her. Um, and she has expressed publicly on her Twitter that she will no longer be coming back to the ranch. And she seemed a bit, um, what's the word? You could just read in the tweets, she seemed angry. Some of the things that have come up, of course, in the media has been Khloe Kardashian asking for you not to speak to the media. And you've always kind of been an outspoken person. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. I, I expected, the call that I expected was Khloe Kardashian saying, Dennis, help us. What information can you give us? What was he eating? What was he drinking? Is it possible he took cough syrup? What, tell us what's going on to give the doctor information to help his, his diagnosis and, and give him better medical care. Instead, I got, I got a rude PR person uh, from 42 West call me and said, uh, Dennis, thank you. Uh, now, are you going to do any media? Have you, have you been contacted by any media? I said, yes. And uh, who? Uh, Good Morning America, The Today Show, Entertainment Tonight, Dr. Drew, Nancy Grace. Uh, are you going to do these shows? I said, absolutely. He said, well, Chloe will do it. Chloe will do it. She should do it instead of you. I said, really? So Chloe's going to, going to talk about what happened in my business when she doesn't know anything about it at, at all? No, that's not going to happen. She said, well, that's what we want, and we expect you to do it. I said, really? Well, do me a favor. Why don't you tell Chloe to go to hell? Because that's not going to happen. And the other thing I said to her, which was sort of a smart-ass remark that I probably shouldn't have said, was, if Chloe's so close to Lamar, why are my working girls waking up with him instead of her? One of the things that you commented on or you you spoke about before was that he was trying to escape some situations and he wanted to take a vacation from whatever was going on in his private life. The The assumption was that he wanted to get away from whatever he was doing in Vegas, obviously partying, obviously doing cocaine. Mm -hmm. He knew that we're zero tolerance and we're not going to put up with it. So, yes, I think that's what it was about. It was about as much about getting away and being in an environment. He, he was insistent that nobody talked to him. Nobody called him. I'm not taking any phone calls. Don't even tell me if I get a phone call. I'm not answering my cell phone. I want to be left to myself. Did you hang out with him? Did he come to your birthday party? And by the way, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, I was in northern Nevada at the Bunny Ranch all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to come down uh, on Wednesday. And the, the day after this happened, so I, I did not hang out with them. The Nye County Sheriffs have uh, spoke a little bit about the investigation and possibly if there was any wrongdoing or anything going on. And I know that the license is a very privileged uh, license for brothels. Can right. you comment on that? Well, the, the Nye County Sheriff's Department, from what I've seen, has done everything they should do. And that's a comment they should make. And if, uh, any business where there's a problem that, that somebody's gotten hurt or sick or overdose, I think that's standard language that we're going to investigate. And I think they were asked, well, if any of the, the working girls or the business was involved in it, are you going to do anything about it? And the answer is yes, and as they should. In fact, if there was any kind of evidence, which there isn't, that the girls were involved in, I'd be the first one talking to the DA to help them prosecute them. I don't want drugs in my workplace at all. And am, am I nervous about my license? No. You know, we, we did what we're supposed to do. We know that this person is a known drug user, but we don't know if this is a time when he's doing it or not doing it. We told him no. He, he promised he wouldn't bring anything. Okay. Now, I'm monitoring things all day long. Is he sleeping? If he's not sleeping, tell him to leave. He got a great night's sleep. He told my manager, I haven't slept like this in a long time. 
is he eating? Everything in the house, we can't quit making food for him. He's a big guy, mm -hmm. and he likes to eat. So from my limited experience and knowledge about drugs, people that are doing cocaine or crack aren't sleeping, yeah. and they're not eating. So we were very comfortable that there wasn't anything going on. Um, Do you think this was a drug overdose? What's your personal opinion? Sadly, I think it might have been an attempted at suicide. And I have nothing to base that on except that when you're in a place 24 hours, and then you want people to sign a confidentiality agreement. My lawyer said that's a clear sign in their mind. Because you said that you think that, or at least you were quoted as saying, that you think that that was something that he learned from the show. But it was after the fact of him. Usually that's something that you learn right when you walk in during the negotiation. Okay, I've made my deal. I need to sign these contracts. And Yeah, I've never seen that. And I've seen, you know, we've had thousand celebrities in there and a lot of much, much bigger than Lamar Odom. I've never seen a celebrity ask for that because they know my business is built on privacy and discretion. I've got a 60-year-old business, and I've owned it 23 years, and, and that's what it's based on. Nobody's ever leaked anything. Even in my book, The Art of the Pimp, I talk about some people, but it's with their permission. And they had their own chapters in the book. So we, we, we just wouldn't tolerate that uh, at all. So. Do you I, think talking about it now hurts your business because you're talking about it now about what things have went on? Or is it because it's already out there and you, you definitely want to get the story out? It's um, already out there. I, I'm not, I'm not going to allow the Kardashians. I'm not going to allow uh, Lamar's father, who ha has history of putting out false reports for money. He's, he's, he's a drug addict also, or was one. Was he accusing you guys of uh, actually drugging him? Im immediately afterwards, immediate, without any knowledge, saying, those hookers drugged my son. Well, that's nonsense. That's absolutely nonsense. And so the Kardashians said some things. They, they overcharged him. Well, it was his idea. Nobody twists. He's 6'10". He's an athlete. Nobody's going to twist his arm. Nobody's putting a gun to his head to say, you're going to give us $75,000. It was Lamar's idea. It was totally his idea to pay that. You have a lot of celebrities that contact you to have discretion to be able to go and see you on their uh, times that they would like to have the services of uh, any of your ranches. And by the way, how many do you own? Seven. I have three in, in Nye County and, and four in Lyon County. A, a lot of people have come out and said, uh, this shouldn't be out in the public, what um, what went on with him. Uh, it should have been something that we shouldn't be talking about because this is his private life. And uh, But you guys kind of, that is something that is really the basis for what you do as a living, right, is keeping things discreet. Absolutely. Nobody, nobody ever knew that Lamar has ever been there or would ever be there. Nobody knows that Lamar whether we know each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, people know that the owner of the Lakers and I are great friends. I was at his funeral. Um, so you can put two and two together and figure out how, it, how everything gels. But we don't talk about people. We were forced to. We were put in a situation. Lamar put us in a situation where we had to deal with things. Mm -hmm. We had to. And I think it was the prudent decision to do that, to let the world know, no, they're not doing drugs in my place. No, we don't tolerate that, and we never will. And there's not one person alive that can stand up and say, I was a customer there, and they allowed me to do drugs. And the, and the world needs to know that, as opposed to Lamar's father and the Kardashian spin. Well, who knows where they come from? They don't want media? Excuse me? The paparazzi knows when they go to the bathroom. They, they know everything. They, it's all staged. They've, they've got makeup crews. They've got, got bodyguards. It's all staged. The paparazzi, they're going to be walking out of BOA in 15 minutes. And here's the paparazzi, like they caught something. No, they didn't caught, catch anything at all. I know, I know how it works. I, I do stuff with TMZ and these people all the time. When, sometimes when a guy jumps out from behind a bush um, when I'm at a restaurant in Hollywood, I know they're going to be there. Okay, but they got questions they want, and they want a response, a quick response, and they try to catch you off guard and hope that you'll say something that nobody else has said.
Uh, the two girls um, that were there at the ranch that night, they have taken some time off. They have. And this is Cherry Ryder. Uh, she stayed around. The next day, she, she opened the, the blinds in, in the parlor, mm -hmm. and there's satellite trucks, there's reporters lined up. She snuck out the back door and took off. Um, the other girl was all upset, crying. She took off. Ryder had came back a couple different times, and she just couldn't deal with it. I talked to her today, and she's trying to get her life together. She's got paparazzi chasing her. She's got the, the Daily Mail in London chasing her. Uh, there's some pictures that were released today of Lamar in, in the bed. She says she didn't do it. The other girl says she didn't do it. There's pictures of watermelon and, and, and Kentucky Fried Chicken in the refrigerator. Um, where the stuff came from, I don't know. What do you think about what the girls are going through who found Lamar, who are getting all this attention right now? What's your feelings with what's going on with them? Well, I feel I feel, I feel feel sorry for them. I'm concerned about them, you know. Um, I reached out to a couple that I'm friends with after just to see how they were. Um, you know, I could see how the media would be very intimidating. Um, you know, from what I, I remember, I looked at it the next day, and I don't remember the site, but Ryder Cherry, Monica Monroe, I mean, all those photos were everywhere, and all I thought to myself was, I don't know if they're out, like to their families, but what if they weren't? Now they're they're plastered everywhere, you know. Um, so I just I feel bad for them. I'm concerned. I hope they balance back. Um, How are the girls doing? Not good, not good at all. Uh, they're just I hear nothing nothing good at all. A girl named Bunny Lane, who was there at the ranch when they were interacting in the parlor, she wasn't involved in the party. Uh, she was crying her eyes out she finally left today on her Facebook page the girl she left with a girl named Tristan uh, put on her Facebook page we don't know where she's at she left without her without her wallet left without her cell phone uh, we're scared has anybody's got any information TMZ of course picked it up they called me I gave them whatever I knew and then later on in the day TMZ reported that somebody had posted on her page that she's okay, she just wants privacy. Do we believe that? I don't know. I don't know what the truth is. They've been offering quite a few dollars to speak to these girls. What do you think about that? They're offering a lot of money. It's shocking how much money the Daily Mail has and these different entities. Um, the girl said their, their answer is, we signed a confidentiality agreement and we're going to stand by it. And then a lawyer, a lawyer told them, well, prior, everything that happened prior to the signing of the confidentiality agreement, in other words, coming in there, meeting him, negotiating with him, whatever happened in the bedroom or didn't happen in the bedroom that night, all the way through Sunday, the lawyers said they can talk about. They just can't talk about anything after that. They've chose not to talk at this point. So who has that confidentiality agreement now? Did it go with uh, Lamar's? belongings it was it was the, the Mars it wasn't ours and it went with his belongings and there was not even an extra copy there was a, one made up for everybody it was there and Lamar took the original uh, and the signed documents so where do you go from here um, I know you guys business as usual up there you got girls uh, I you guys kind of have like where you have girls stay for a while and then you change them out is that how it works well what what happens is girls come in it's like a hotel mm -hmm. And you've got this hotel, and our license, I think, is for 14 girls or something, if I remember correctly. So the girls are there. And one girl says, I want to, I want to be there from the 2nd to the 10th. Another girl says, I want to be there from the 3rd to the 19th. And so you're, it's like a hotel where you're booking rooms. And, of course, there's cancellations, and there's new people that want to come in. And so there's, there's always a, a changeover uh, of what's going on. Uh, the house is not in good shape right now. Uh, the house is way down on girls. There's uh, probably 25% of the amount of girls they should have. I was there today, lots of customers coming in. Uh, a lot of people are curious. A lot of customers that come in want to see the room, the suite that he was in. Um, we're bringing girls down now from the Love Ranch and the Bunny Ranch because we, we, have, to, we have to have more girls. And I don't know if these girls are ever going to come back. Uh, they they might be so upset that they just don't ever, don't want to deal with it again. 
So do you think this publicity is helping or hurting? Well, it's going to help. There's no question about it. There's a, a segment of the, of the population that hates what happened. We all hate what happened. They hate me, but they're never going to be my customers either. That's same same people. Um, and it's not the right wing because the right wing are, are good customers. Um, but th th there's customers coming in. And, and it's, uh, you know, I think Heidi Fleiss, our, our local ex-madam, said it best. This is terrible. This is a terrible tragedy. And your business is going to triple. Is there anything that you want uh, residents here in Nye County locals to know about you or things that you haven't spoke about that you would really like them to know? Well, I think they need to know. The, the assumption is that everybody in the, in the prostitution industry, drug addicts, sexually transmitted disease, sex trafficking, and a lot of terrible things. And you know what? They're right until you legalize it. You take it out of the hands of the criminals, no different than prohibition, and, and where the gangsters and the politicians made a lot of money, and you put it in the hands of the professionals, you license it, you, you test it, you, you have quality control, uh, you have, uh, have age restrictions, and Nye County's got it right. Nevada's got it right, except for Las Vegas, evidenced by the fact that Oscar Goodman says there's 3,000 active pimps working there when he was in office. There's more now. Uh, the sheriff said there's 32,000 girls that applied their trade, and they arrest, they arrest them all the time. But if Las Vegas had legal prostitution, you'd put all those people out of business because the consumer is going to find the product. If there's a legal alternative, they're going with that. You don't see people buying bootleg whiskey anymore. <laughs> Those guys are out of business, except for a few of them that are doing it as a hobby. You don't, you don't see the numbers rackets that the mafia made a fortune off of in that business anymore. You know why? California Lotto, Super Powerball. They made it, made it legal. Are you surprised when you meet people here in Nye County and some of them are so open-minded about you just running a business because that's something that I seem to come across with a lot of people when you speak about uh, the brothels here. I am not surprised because that's Nevada. Mm -hmm. Nevada is live and let live. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis, I don't, I don't care what you do. I don't have to go there. I've had a customer tell me recently, Dennis, your place is like Walmart and church. I only go if I want something. <laughs> I don't care. If, if a guy's got an arsenal of guns, I don't care if you're a weed smoker or grower. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't put it in my face, it doesn't matter. I don't do any drugs. I don't drink. You know, I don't smoke. My vice is food, and I wish I could kick it, <laughs> but I, I, I can't. You know, I, I just try to maintain it the best I can. And so I think the county needs to know that I've got a multi-million dollar investment in the county. My alien, my alien travel center uh, is, is very important to us. And uh, some of your money goes to our fire department, doesn't it? Absolutely. The brothel fees go to cover the EMT system. In fact, when Harry Reid took his shot at the brothels, uh, now here's, a guy, here's a guy, grew up in the brothels in Searchlight, Nevada, swam in the swimming pools. His mommy fed him and clothed him off the, off the prostitution money that, he, that she got for doing laundry for the girls, a supporter of the industry for 40 years. And when he turned on us, Tony DeMeo stood up and said, this money covers our EMT system in Nye County. Without it, we got a serious problem. And, and, and some of the rural counties in Nevada wouldn't even have doctors if it wasn't for the prostitution because that's where their weekly income comes from to allow them to stay in these little towns in the little middle of nowhere and be able to practice medicine. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you.
And right now, Lamar Odom is hopefully on the road to recovery. What damage has been done permanently to his brain and organs has not yet been revealed. Here at KPVM-TV News 46 and KA's Country Radio, we wish him and his family the very best. As for Dennis Hoff, he has been and will always be outspoken and to the point regarding his values and rules as a business owner. Hoff likes to play and wants others to have fun, but draws the line when it comes to threatening his livelihood. When asked if food was his his only vice, I suggested that it might be women too. He replied, well, that's a given. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. This has been your special report behind closed doors for KPVM-TV News 46 and KA's Country Radio.